Do you guys want to know how to actually grow muscle? You want to work out the best way, the most efficient way, or at least just make the most of your gains? Then you've come to the right video. So guys, my name is Zach Perna. Welcome to my channel. If you have been here before, legend, what's going on? If you haven't, that would have been very weird. Um, but please subscribe anyway, because we're about to get into a lot of juicy details. So I don't want to go too deep into this. A couple of reasons. One, I don't know. I don't know the exact mechanism exactly behind it, because that would just bore me. But I want to go and take a little bit of a zoomed out approach and look at the practicality of this. So the practical terms of science, because I think some people get really caught up in the weeds of like talking about the science-based things, but they go so far into like petri dish studies that it doesn't really affect practicality in like real life. So I kind of want to use that, like educate you guys a little bit on those principles and how I interpret those principles. So there are three main mechanisms of muscle growth. We're going to go into these individually. Number one is mechanical tension. Mechanical tension refers to simply the tension that a muscle fiber, the force it's producing. And this is usually equated in weight, just, just load. If you've got 50 kilos pushing down on your chest on a dumbbell, that's a lot of tension that's being produced by your pec. So the force from that weight, the, high, the heavier you lift, the more tension is going to be produced for the most part. So usually people go, yep, mechanical tension equals weight. We'll get into a little bit more later on. The second one is muscle damage. This is literally damaging the muscle. You can do this in a variety of ways by... Uh, heavy negatives, forced reps, changing up your exercise, like adding new variety in there, doing things you haven't done, doing drop sets, just kind of really, really damaging, like weighted stretching, that stuff. It doesn't necessarily equate to more muscle gain, but it is a supposed element of muscle gain. It's associated with it, and it's kind of that feeling of DOMS as well is really associated with high levels of muscle damage. I kind of see, I conceptualize muscle damage as like literally damaging, like someone like going in there with a knife and like scratching. That's kind of how I imagine it because it's not getting a lot of bang for buck in terms of repairing that damage isn't building muscle. It's the same as when you, if you were to cut your arm with a, with a knife, that there's muscle damage going on there. doesn't mean you're going to grow biceps. The third element is obviously an exaggerated example, but I think it's the same mechanism. The third mechanism is metabolic stress. This is what most people just refer to as the pump. Uh, your muscles get a really tight feeling like someone's blowing air into the muscle. <laughs> Every time I think of the pump. Metabolic stress is like lactic acid, that pump, the burn, and all the metabolites and blood are filling into the muscle and you get that like that feeling. So people often chase the pump. I definitely did in my early years of training. I chased the pump like crazy. And what you would end up like associating training hard with getting a good pump and that means muscle growth. And it's actually not the case. M like metabolic stress can contribute a tiny, like a really small amount, they believe. They've kind of gone off it a lot now in the literature. It's mainly mechanical tension, but metabolic stress, like that pump work is a little bit and you may as well, it's kind of like not 100% sure either way. So you may as well like throw it in there. That's why it's good to get a pump. Make sure even at the end of your session, you can kind of do a bit of drop sets or fast pace intensity volume work. But for the most part, you want to maximize mechanical tension because the biggest driver of muscle growth, just without a doubt, is mechanical tension. And this is simple. Like, we don't need to go into it too far. It's so simple. You need to overload, right? Because everyone knows progressive overload equals muscle gain. Well, why is that? Well, because if you can lift 10 kilos now and you're trying to lift 12 kilos and you're really struggling to, your body's going to be like, fuck, we need to lift this. Otherwise, he'll die. It, it doesn't really know. So that that's the change. That, that's the, that change is if you need to lift more now, your body's going to go, holy fuck. Let's try and lift more. So over time, you should be able to lift more. If you're strong, if you have a stronger muscle, all things considered, you're gonna have a bigger muscle. So if I can chest press 100 kilo dumbbells, my chest has to be big. It has to be. Then the wizards get in the way of manipulating form. So we'll get into that a little bit in a second. But for the most part, mechanical tension is everything because you need to maximize the force your muscles are producing. That's all it is. That's literally all it is. If you're doing a stick to the bicep example if you're doing a bicep curl you want your bicep to absolutely give the most force possible which means you want it to be able to lift a 30 kilo dumbbell easily like that obviously who can do that a few people but you want you want it to be able to lift that and produce that force because that means a bigger muscle just because you get a pump doesn't mean you're actually growing muscle does it i mean if you want to get a, i could get a pump right now i'd literally eat a shitload of salt heaps of sugar have a bit of water and just do this and i guarantee you i get a pump sometimes i'm eating and i get a pump it's just blood flow. Anyone can do that. So actually grow muscle and grow muscle tissue the way we want it to. You guys have to stress progressive overload and mechanical tension. So let's look at a problem when people train for mechanical tension. Usually that means, okay, cool. So heaviest weight possible, right? And they just go crazy lifting heavy weights. Problem with that is their form isn't standardized. Their form is now fucked. It's all out of whack and it's, they're thinking, okay, well, I want to get 50 kilo dumbbell. So I'm just going to, just going to yank them. So what happens is they use momentum. They bounce out of the bottom. They catch at the top, then back down again. There's no controlled negative. So in actuality, they're lifting heavier weight, yeah, but their pecs aren't actually moving the weight. 
the little bit of it, of course they're contributing, but imagine what else is. You've got gravity, you've got physics on your side, you've got momentum, you've got your triceps, you've got your joints and tendons and the elasticity of all of those. You know, you don't actually have your pecs really producing that force. So when you strip it back and go, okay, so heavy as possible, yep, that's great. For the desired rep range around eight to 10, six to even six to 12 is, is great. That's fine, but let's make sure the muscle itself is actually the thing doing the work. It's not just the weight moving. It's not your tendons and joints and physics moving the weight. It's the desired target muscle moving that weight. That's why when I train in my form and when I give my programs to people, I'm stressing my form very hard and I have a very particular way of training. It's a very slow negative, it's a pause, it's a squeeze and it's a deliberate squeeze. So like you don't just yank it, you start by flexing the, the target muscle. There's a, there's a lot of stuff into it. In my app, I literally have nearly 100 videos explaining like different forms. You guys can check that out below or at zackperna.com if you wanna see. Highly recommend you do. But that's why form is so important because you can't just move weight. You really have to do it intently and move weight by trying to create the most force possible. By that, just it basically means is, as long as it's hard, like does your chest burn like crazy? The whole, is it difficult? Is it Does it never come off your chest in, on a bench press? Great, if not, maybe have a think about what you're doing and reevaluate how you're doing things. Um, another thing I wanna talk about is what's like kind of known as effective reps. Now I go into all of this detail, like all of this detail in my new book, Good Influence, coming out at the end of the month. Also, you'll get a lot out of this too. Um, anyway, that's my plugs done, <laughs> I promise. <laughs> buy my book, buy my book. Uh, anyway, so let's talk about rep ranges then. So the most effective reps, this is what kind of they're known colloquially as, are the last five reps of a set. And if you think about that, it kind of makes sense. It's because the last five reps of a set are gonna be pretty difficult. You can't just train and do six reps when you had 20 in the tank because it's nowhere near hard enough. The weight isn't heavy enough. It's not actually difficult enough for your muscle. The thing to remember is the last five reps all have something in common, have a very slow speed of the weight, speed of the bar. So imagine like bench press. On your last five reps, you're not doing this. The bar isn't moving very quickly on purpose. It's like, it's struggle street. It's like, ah, it's like that slow. They're the ones that actually make a difference. If you do all five reps, you train to absolute failure, you're gonna tick all the boxes. So that's why I like training to failure, I think it's good. But the problem with that is you accumulate a lot of muscle damage in the process and you kind of get a bit sore and then you might impact your ability to get back into the gym the next day. And then at the end of the day, you can't really progress because you're kind of training too hard, which is not a lot of people do that, but some, some do. That's why the reps in reserve training comes into play sometimes when people go, I'm leaving couple in the tank. That's kind of, that's what they do. But for me personally, I feel like not a lot of people train to a failure or know the limit so i think it doesn't hurt just to go to a failure where it's safe but know that the last five reps of a set are the ones that are going to be pretty juicy even arnold said this he said the last five reps is what separates the the champion from the people who are not a champion he said that <laughs> and like and it's legit it's true it's science backed it's something to do with the speed when the bar when you're trying to move it fast but it's going slow it is a lot of time for the muscles to kind of cross over and do all this weird shit at a cellular level. I don't really know the sciencey stuff. It kind of goes over my head, but I kind of caught up a little bit. But all I took from that was, okay, cool. So the, la the last five reps of failure are important. So that's why if it gets hard, just think those last five reps is what you want. And whether you get six reps or whether you get 12 reps, it doesn't really matter because you could do a set to 20. And as long as it's to a failure, that's just as effective as doing a set of 10 to a failure. Only difference is you're accumulating more reps, which could be more fatigue and also more volume. So just something to, to consider. But in terms of muscle building, it's nearly the same kind of thing. And above all else, if you guys kind of think, well, what do I take from this video? I would say you have to progressive overload. I would say try and get stronger over time, but standardize your form. So it's contributing the most of the force from your target muscle. Don't have the horrible form, please just try not to. And don't chase the pump either, because chasing the pump will only kind of satisfy your egos. Uh, that's pretty much what I would say. And also just rest. This is something that not a lot of people talk about is if you don't rest enough, you literally won't make as many gains. I make my most gains when I rest maybe two to three days a week, even three days a week. It's hard, mentally it's hard, but I know I get a lot more out of it because when I train in my sessions, I go so much harder and I get so much more out of it and I'm stronger and I'm like, wow, this everything feels great. Guys, let me know in the comments below your thoughts on styles of training. Like what have you found works well for you? Maybe what do you need help with? I'm happy to answer any questions that I see. So that's it for me, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and you guys know what to do. Stay massive.